I remember going to a lecture on the atonement in Oxford when I was an undergraduate and the lecturer set out all the different theories and all these wonderful bits and pieces and mm. bells and whistles. And at the end of it, somebody said, how much of this does somebody have to believe to be a Christian? Mm. And the lecturer smiled and said, very little. <laughs> yeah, right. Something about yeah. the love of God, yeah. the death of Jesus, mm. and discovering that you're part of that story. Mm -hmm. And then mm. once you've grasped that or been grasped by it, everything else is, is yours to explore. But yeah, yeah. in other words, you don't need to understand all the theory in order to, mm -hmm. it's like, you'd, you know, I had a really good meeting in a restaurant yesterday, I, I know nothing about mm. the science of how you cook, mm. but I enjoyed the meal. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else was doing that yeah, stuff. Right. So, so that's, that's fair enough. Mm. So that, yes, it's much better that people think, oh dear, I'm a sinner, bad things are going to happen, phew, Jesus died, so now I'm okay. Much better than they think that, mm. than they think life is just a meaningless bunch of trash and mm. I'm just going to go on the street and do drugs. You know, yeah, I'm the, yeah, yeah. Sure. There's, there's no choice. But the danger with saying God is really angry with me, fortunately he's punished somebody else and said so now I'm okay, mm -hmm. is that that distorts deeply who you think God is yeah. and it truncates who I now am as a redeemed person mm. in Christ indwelt by the Spirit. Mm. And in order to get the whole picture, you need the bigger story. Mm -hmm. And mm. I think it went wrong, mm. particularly in the Middle Ages, in the Western Church. I don't know very much about Eastern Orthodoxy, but I do know they didn't make the same mistakes as we made in, in the, the medieval period. They no doubt made their own mistakes, etc. Mm. And that's why we all need constantly to have our visions corrected by fresh readings of scripture. And yes, this is not yes. something which happens once and once only, it's got to happen in every generation. Yeah. But it seems to me that you can see stages where the great teachers in the mid Middle Ages, who were doing some great things in some ways, mm. are enthralled to Greek philosophy, either to Plato or Aristotle, or mm. some new mm. mixtures of both. Mm. So that then, by the time you get the reformers protesting about mm. purgatory and the mass, which are the two big targets, certainly in the English Reformation, mm. what they are doing is reinstating a platonic vision of Christianity, mm. only with a going straight to heaven rather than having to do time in purgatory thing, mm -hmm. and with a the heavenly stuff is the important thing, so what we do down here doesn't count because that would be works righteousness. So don't mm. think that if you're a priest at the altar, you can do this magic with, mm. with the bread and the wine. You know, mm. That's their polemical reason for doing what they're doing. In other words, they're trying to give biblical answers to medieval questions. Mm. Mm -hmm. The danger is they're actually giving biblical stroke platonic answers mm -hmm. to those medieval questions. Mm -hmm. And what's happened since then with the Enlightenment, this is t cutting a very long story very short, mm -hmm. is that Plato takes over and the Bible falls back mm -hmm. so that the Bible just becomes, mm -hmm. oh, th th this odd old text which, by which we can prove our various doctrines. Mm -hmm. So that much mm -hmm. Western 19th century Christianity mm -hmm. becomes de facto Platonist. Now, mm -hmm. I'm in debate with people about this at the moment because there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who still claiming to be teachers of the church, mm. really do explicitly prefer Plato to the Bible. Mm. Um, and I think mm. that is, mm. that saps the life and energy mm. from the gospel of Jesus. Mm. It means mm. that instead of resurrection, mm. you have, oh, well, Jesus was taken up into heaven from where he appeared and uh, from time to time, and then we're going to be taken up into heaven as well. And that's mm. the real thing, mm. seeing God mm. in heaven. Mm. Instead of saying, no, Jesus taught us to pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. Yes. By, by what right are you stripping? Mm that out of the central mm. prayer of our faith mm. 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 <laughs> and in terms of mission mm. I think it's absolutely vital mm. if the name of the game is and um, we have these souls which are exiled from heaven and we're looking forward to going back there mm. then mission becomes mm. telling other people that they have souls that are exiled and that need to go to heaven mm. That's never the mission of the church. The mission mm -hmm. of the church is to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Yes, yes. Here and now. So, yeah. I mean, I could go on about this all day, and I sometimes <laughs> yeah. do. But, yeah. but so, so I think yeah. it goes yeah. back to yeah. the Middle Ages and to the fact that the reformers mm. who were determined to try to give biblical answers to the medieval mm. questions mm. borrowed far too much Plato to do so mm. because they assumed mm. that the Jewish context 
was not only irrelevant but mm. misleading because it was about works righteousness. Mm. So we don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. And see, I've run into this as well. If I quote sure. Qumran or Psalms of Solomon or Fourth Ezra or whatever to explain what's going on in the Gospels or Paul, some people I could name in America <laughs> throw up their hands in horror and say, oh, N.T. Wright appeals to these Jewish texts, but we know that Paul was opposed to Judaism because he, that was works wow. righteousness. Wow. So N.T. Wright is, is drawing on these, yeah. these naughty texts. Yeah. And, and so it's not surprising he's distorting the Gospel. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say, sorry, we're, we're into history here. Yeah, yeah. You want to know what the word righteousness of God means, yes. look at other people who are using it at the time. Yes, Paul right. has a new definition of it, yes. but it's that that he's talking about. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> These are important words to think about. We can't get our story right unless we find out where it went wrong. And I believe N.T. Wright hits the nail on the head here when we shifted from a Jewish train of thought, you know, Jesus's train of thought, to a Platonic or Greek or Roman train of thought about the soul and body and the relationship between us and heaven and hell and everything else. So as we reclaim our story, these are helpful tidbits that can help us find our way. Thank you, God, for these breadcrumbs.